Today we're going to talk about gaming disorder coming up. For those of you who are new to this channel, I upload daily game development videos offering tips, tricks, and industry advice for game developers. If this sounds like something that would be useful to you, consider subscribing. Today I want to talk about something that's pretty controversial among the gaming industry. And that is the announcement that the World Health Organization made earlier this week. So for those of you that don't know what this is about, the World Health Organization added gaming disorder to its list of conditions and disorders. So the gaming disorder is defined as follows. Gaming disorder is characterized by a pattern of persistent and recurrent be gaming behavior, digital gaming or video gaming, which may be online, i.e. over the internet, or offline, manifested, manifested by one, impaired control over gaming, e.g. onset, frequency, intensity, duration, termination, context, two, increasing priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other life interests and daily activities, and three, continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. The behavior pattern is of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The pattern of gaming behavior may be continuous or episodic and recurrent. The gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months in order for a diagnosis to be assigned although the required duration may be shortened if all diagnostic requirements are met and symptoms are severe. So this is something that the WHO uh, actually proposed quite a while ago. I believe I first read about this, I think it was February. And even since then, it was sort of gaining a lot of criticism and a lot of, of flack and feedback. The problem with this is, is it's sort of open-ended. They're not all that specific in how this differs from addiction, for example. When you read their classification of this, it sounds a lot like addiction to me. And the term disorder seems a bit off, in my opinion. Um, I do believe that there is an issue with this. I do believe that it is a issue in the industry. Uh, and I do believe that this should be handled responsibly. But... I'm not so sure I agree with how they've they've laid this out here. Even the WHO themselves agree that further research is needed in this topic. So my opinions on this are kind of twofold. The first side of this is I do believe that something needs to be done because there are some things out there that are just done deliberately and without consideration for, for those who, who might have these problems. But on the flip side of that coin, I do worry about what regulations may spawn because of this. I do think that there are some regulations that need to be imposed to help combat sort of gaming addiction, um, similar to what they've done with gambling addiction. A lot of companies who make gambling software, for example, will include links uh, and, and material about responsible gaming or responsible ga gambling, and will include links to hotlines and, and whatnot to help with those who are, are uh, addicted to gambling. I mean, truth be told, if you go into any MMO, you're going to find people who are addicted to it. I will personally say that, at least in, um, in my high school and early college years, I played entirely too much World of Warcraft to the point where it was destructive. I take that on myself. I take that. I take full responsibility for that. I don't. I don't feel like that's the responsibility of, of the developers in that case. Um, but I have noticed in in recent years that Blizzard has really started trying to push uh, messages about you know, hey, there's more to life than just the World of Warcraft. Go out and and hang out with your friends. And they put these little messages even in the game, and they add these features like timers and stuff uh, that you can set that will go off to say, hey, you've been playing this game for a while, you know, maybe take a break. And they've implemented other features throughout the years to, um, to sort of help combat that. So I do think that there are a lot of companies out there who are um, doing things to help combat this type of addiction. So I do think there are companies out there that definitely take advantage of these types of 
addiction or, or disorders, if you will. I'm not going to name any of them, though. But I definitely think that they exist. So the IGDA uh, executive director posted some things on Twitter. Let me go ahead and read them off to you real quick. There, it was a total of six tweets. One, let's be clear here. Loving games is not a mental health problem. Making games your hobby of choice is not a disorder. Two, the WHO's creation of a gaming disorder has the potential to do significant and serious harm to people who use games as a coping mechanism for anxiety, depression, and stress, and may encourage doctors to address the symptoms, but not the underlying illnesses. Three, psychiatrists themselves don't agree on how to assess and treat addiction to media, and the WHO's move is at best grossly premature and at worst deeply harmful. The APA, for example, has provided many more details and called for further study. Four, but we're already starting to see unscrupulous businesses starting to look for ways to exploit this, to exploit this rather, by calling for preventative intervention and setting up sham addiction treatment centers with no basis in science. Five, so let's take a moment to remind everyone that video games are protected by the First Amendment, that there are proven con cognitive benefits to playing games, and that just because video games are an incredible blend of art and entertainment, video games are not dangerous. Six, I support responsible gaming and especially encourage parents to monitor and be involved in the games that their kids play. But the WHO's creation of gaming disorder is irresponsible, not founded in science, and extraordinarily prejudicial against game players and game devs. So I actually posted about this in Reddit just to get an idea from uh, some of the game developers on there what they thought about this. I figured, um, you know, r slash game dev was probably a good place to, to post this just because I wanted to start a conversation about it. The feedback on it was mostly the same. Uh, a lot of game developers actually feel that something needs to be done about this. Um, a lot of game developers feel that it's something that's been ignored for too long. Uh, so for example, Sam Sweet says, good, Honestly, about time we take some responsibility. I love games and truly believe they make the world brighter and more interesting, but we can't plug our ears when we hear the si about the situations in which they can harm people. I 100% agree with this. Um, I think far too many times, I know my myself as a game developer, I've done this too, is anytime somebody attacks our industry, I get super defensive. And part of that is because, uh, you know, it's it's been years of, of people talking about violence in video games and... Um, people are saying video games are too violent and then you turn around, you turn on like an episode of Law and & Order and it's got stuff that is way, way darker than a lot of games out there. Now granted, there are, there are games out there that are, are very dark as well and, and full of gore and things like that, but... So I get being defensive about it. Um, that's always been something that's bothered me is that whole argument of, of video game violence. And I think that alone is a topic that warrants a separate discussion question of the day is, what do you guys think of this gaming disorder? I'm actually going to post a few links in the description below um, to uh, not only the WHO, but a few articles that have been written up on it with different perspectives on what some of these authors think of it. I'd love to hear back from you guys on what you think about it, as well as uh, what actions should be taken, uh, if any, by the game dev community. Are there any of you out there who have suffered from gaming addiction and have you overcome that? And if so, how did you overcome that? And do you wish that you had some form of formal diagnosis to help you out with it? Or is it something that you sort of were able to figure out and overcome on your own? Um, I'd love to hear back from you guys on this. I'd love to start a, a, a conversation about this. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this video out here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, if you're new here, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys tomorrow.